Hello, everyone out there. Welcome to the Dietitian Against Diets podcast show. This is Rashonda Thornton, your host, and I'm excited to introduce you to my guest this afternoon. But before we do so, I want to actually introduce you to one of my podcast partners, uh, actually a company out here in St. Louis called Custom Foods um, Scaping. So right now, during our time that we're at home, <laughs> And also, especially the time there is um, summertime, uh, we all wish we had a garden to grow fresh, delicious vegetables. Um, but ultimately, when it comes to gardening, it takes a huge effort. I mean, anywhere from bringing in good soil so the vegetables can thrive and coming up with a plan to plant what and plant when. Um, I think it's pretty overwhelming, especially for myself. Well, there's a company called Custom Foodscaping that comes in and they can help you create a beautiful garden by helping you to set it up and also support you along the way to ensure that you access success in your garden. Uh, what they are known for is that they're known for transforming ordinary spaces into beautiful food producing landscapes. <laughs> they provide consultation, design, and installation services to create your own edible landscaping. To learn more about Custom Foodscaping, go to their website at www.customfoodscaping.com or find them on Facebook or Instagram at Custom Foodscaping. Well, hello everyone again. It is always good to see everyone. This is Rashonda Thornton, the host of the Dietitian Against Diets podcast show. I have to tell you that I love my platform. I love what I do because like myself, I use nutrition as a vehicle to bring help and happiness to other people. And it's such a joy to have other people that I find do the same exact thing in their own way. And when it comes to uniqueness, I think that's how um, we can you can stand out over the crowd and really get your messaging through. And the reason why I'm saying this is because the gentleman that I have today with me, um, Jake Sorosiak, Sorosiak, got it. Uh, he does just that. Um, give you a bit of a background about him, but you'll find out about who he is more so through our conversations. So just to give you a little bit of insight, um, Jake, he is a online fitness and nutrition coach through uh, Fitness Liberty. Uh, he is also um, an active duty in the Air Force station out there in Ohio. And with his collab with the combination of just being in that military setting and being in that fitness setting, he his whole idea of his approach is to find a way to serve others. Um, and that's building, uh, instilling their confidence, helping them to live a life of happiness and fulfillment. And he's been able to do that on both ends um, in regards to his service and also his training service. So uh, I want to welcome Jake to the to the stage and to say welcome and um, welcome to the show. Rashonda, I'm so honored, girl. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for, for tuning in. If you are watching or listening right now, you are listening to one of the best podcasts in the world. <laughs> well, thank you. I'll take that. <laughs> and having you on there only makes it better. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, I, you know, I can definitely say for myself, every day I get up, I am passionate about my mission of helping others. And it's all about others. And you find that you know, once you find your passion, you just dig right into it and, and passion begets passion. And when I was introduced to you and I kind of done some more research, it's like this dude, you know, he has a, a unique angle in which he finds his way to create his messaging. And when you have a unique angle, it comes from some place. So even before we talk about your unique um, messaging, kind of give us a little background of who Jake is and how Jake became the Jake he is now. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, I appreciate that. I, I think that that's extremely important, especially in the world that we live in nowadays. You know, attention is so valuable. You know, we're, we live in a world where, uh, again, you're constantly scrolling. So my goal, just like you, Rashonda, is to be able to add value and put my voice out there and to add to other lives. So where to start? It's crazy. I, um, <laughs> I'll start with, you know, my my journey of growing up, um, a, a couple highlights that really, I guess, changed my life and have really taught me and made me the person I am. I have to give a lot of credit to who my parents are. I, I love, I've been raised in an amazing family. My mom, my dad, I have both great personality traits from both of them. And I think I've just been able to exemplify them and bring it out into the world, bring it out through my coaching. And again, living a life of service, my parents do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. So I can't credit from them I, i'm just so blessed and so grateful to have been raised in that household but under yeah. those two um you know just a, a small story that really i guess triggered me into living a life of we versus me this is crazy i don't know how much research you've done but when i was a, a young man so there was a a man that lived by my house okay and he was a disabled man and he lived every day he would sit outside and 
every single day we would drive by and I'd say, you know what, one day I'm going to take that guy to Disney World. One day I'm going to one day I'm going to take that guy to Disney World. And I tell my parents and they're like, yeah, son, you're going to, we believe you. So, you know, fast forward to me, 18 year old me, uh, a busser at a local restaurant and I saved up enough money to take this guy to Disney World. It was pretty cool. I was able, again, this is a huge long story, but mm -hmm. um, I was able to save up enough money to approach this man's family and to give them the gift and, and just told them kind of the story and her mom, you know, explained more to me about what it was. And it was crazy because the story blew up right in, okay. the, in the community and everybody in the community came together to take this man's family to Disney World to have oh the my. trip of their life. So again, just that, that instance alone really stands out to me, Rashonda, to where it really clicked in my head to living a life of service and life is about we and not me. That was the best feeling that I've ever had in my life. So hmm. since then, which is crazy. I mean, I've just been doing things in terms of prioritizing my own growth to be able to pour into other cups. And I'm sure that you would agree, right? The more that you have in your cup, the more that you can pour into other cups. So totally. since then, joined the Air Force, um, now living my living the dream as a fitness and nutrition coach as well, inspiring lives around the world. It's just, I'm just so grateful, Rashonda. Yeah. And again, it's one of those things where Life takes you down this path and you had no idea this is what you were meant to, to be in and in that space, but you showed it in different ways. You just didn't know it would be the end, the, the end point of where you're at as far as what you're doing now. You never knew that's kind of where it would lead, but you're still doing the same, you're still providing the same type of, um, I guess, results of helping people to, you know, learn what, you know, build that confidence to empower them to make those changes. And I think a lot of times, you know, and that's something I want to ask you because you know, a lot of times when you have a fitness or nutrition coach, you know, they look to you as you just tell me the instructions and I'll just follow whatever you say. And I, I, I would definitely, I'm sure that I can say we both agree that that doesn't really work. And that's not the relationship that you want with, you don't want your clients to, to, you want to work with them, like say, as a team and seeing like what benefit comes more out of in a long term when it's more of a team effort, not just you're spitting out information. So when you do your online work with your clients, you know, what, what are some of the techniques that you use to help them to understand that they are part of this bigger picture? Yeah, I love that you mentioned that. I think that, and this is something that I emphasize in my coaching is being a coach, right? A coach doesn't say, here's the plan, Rashonda, follow it. It's here's the plan. Now let's do this together. I don't want to just tell you what you're doing, Rashonda. I want to tell you why you're doing it as well, right? So that's the true definition of a coach, right? Again, one day my goal, no matter how long I work with a client, is for them to call me and be like, look, Jake, I love you, your positivity, your motivation, your Granny J videos, everything that you're making, I love it, but I can do this on my own now. I don't need you anymore. And uh, again, I think that that's the ideal situation for all of my clients, and I'm sure that you would agree as well. Anyone that you're touching in your life, Rashonda, you want them to one day fly on their own right you're the mama totally, bird yes. the baby birds and they fly on their own out of the nest one day right mm -hmm. it's like what good are we if we if you have to depend on us like what work have we done to help you um, and I think that's a lot of misconceived uh, perceptions of you know when people are wanting to be more in shape or be more healthy um, they they feel like they can't they're they don't understand that they have the ability within themselves they just need the tools and so one of the things I always work tell clients that I build your toolbox. So over time, as we're working, you're growing, you're developing, you're having the ability to create your own foundation, your own establishment. And then that's how you know how to live your life moving forward. You know, so like when, when I think of the word fitness liberty, the, the thing that sits to me is the, the liberty part, because liberty means freedom, liberation. And so like, to me, that already sums up, you know, what, what, what you guys stand for, what you personally, you know, what you stand for in conjunction with them are like, Building that confidence is going to help them to feel free and to help them to empower them to like, no, you can do a lot more than you thought you, you, than you were taught that you could do. Yeah, I love that you mentioned that, the, the tool analogy, because you're so right, Rashonda. You know, being able to, to give someone else the tools and then them using the tools in their mm -hmm. own way. And again, creating something that's sustainable for them. I like that, Rashonda. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just a mindset, you know, you have to... You know, let them know I'm here to do the journey, work the journey with you or work through this with you, just not here to give. Like, I'm your navigation system, 
but I'm giving you not just direction, but we you may be rerouted. Okay, we have to re reposition ourselves, think about what we've done and how do we work the next time. You know, it's all about working with them to help them to see that they can really at the end of the day do it on their own. You know, um, yeah. So when we're you know when you you probably see this in your in in regards to your your end of being in the fitness and nutrition industry. Um, Let's like just kind of give the audience um, some things that you, you know, we both can probably definitely say what we hear and what we know as far as being like, what is the main thing people like feel about when it comes to like exercise? Like, is it something that where, you know, you got to break those barriers when people want to exercise, they just want to just do it all at one time. They want to go from zero to 75 and in their idea of success is I have to get to 75 as quick as possible because that's success, not necessarily understanding. It takes time to shift gears, you know. Uh, what, are, what are We'll just kind of keep it pocketed in different categories, but when it comes to the fitness, like what are some of the misconceptions and myths that you've heard that you've seen with, working with clients and about that? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things that come to mind, and this is a big picture in anything. In terms of fitness, nutrition, life, progress is more important than perfection, right? So again, you making progress from where you're at means mm -hmm. more than you going to the gym six days a week going from zero, right? I would rather you, and I'm sure you're nodding your head as well, you'd rather someone go one day a week for three, four weeks, and then saying, hey, Brashonda, hey, Jake, I'm ready to go too, right? Because yes. it's the end destination for anyone. It's about making progress. I really believe that, again, any area of life, you can apply this to fitness, nutrition, discipline, any, any work, any professional area, it's not about achieving a certain destination in life. It's about taking those baby steps and recognizing that you're making progress towards the best version of yourself, right? There, there's a quote that says, small steps turn into great distances over time. So our goal is to get someone else to take those small steps. Yeah. And I totally agree. I mean, actually in on my book, I have a book, I have a topic a title that says, you know, perf uh, not progress, not perfection, but progress, because that's that's the goal. Just recognize the things that you have done, which is going to give you the ammunition, the confidence to know that you can continue to move that forward. Uh, Live in a world where you know all you're seeing in, in the media is you know the the results of someone's body or their life, and you equivocate that today. They were you know, did everything 110%. They didn't make any mistakes, you know. So if I try to do that, oh, I can't do that because I have to be perfect to order to do that. And and that's, you're already coming in with it, with the mindset of failure. You're, you're creating an opportunity to feel failure because you think that you have to live up to perfection versus understand it's not about perfection. You know, it's about how are you progressing and keeping that progression going, you know. Yeah. Uh, Rashawn, I'm going to ask you a question. Sure. I'm curious to know, uh, what do you think about the perfectionist mindset or the all or nothing mindset, right? A lot of people struggle with that. What are some tips or or, or what advice would you give to someone else with those yeah. mindsets? You know what? I and, and I talk about those topics. You know, people are saying, "I'm, I'm eating 100 percent, 100 percent out," or it's, it's, you know, it's not it's not black and white. Like we don't have to think in a black and white capacity. It's, it's a whole lot of gray area that we can live in. And when you think about absolutes, it's never, you know, why would you want to just not do anything or overdo it? Like, why can't there be something in between? And I, and I think it goes back to profession is equivocated to good. And anything that's not exactly perfect is equivocated to not good, bad. So we feel we only have two options. And understanding you don't want either of these options. You want that option in between. And what does that option look like? So going all or none is never the mindset to have because if we stop and start, stop and start, stop and start, stop and start, we're getting nowhere. We're wearing ourselves out mentally, emotionally, physically, and we're not moving forward, i.e. progression. So those are my like initial just things when it comes to that mentality of just, I have to be, I have to be perfect. Um, and I think, you know, even like, connecting to a person and, and, and helping them to see that initially in the beginning, working together, um, helping them to, you know, celebrate the times that they have progressed. I have this a quick analogy I do with, a, with clients, you know, everyone's always trying to find a negative. If you have a significant other and they brought you flowers every Monday, and for the last three years, every Monday they bought you flowers, there's one Monday they forgot. Guess out of all those Mondays, which one would you remember? the one that they forgot. And it's the same thought process. We're always looking for the, the stuff that didn't go right or we did wrong versus acknowledging all the things that 
over the big picture, we're great. And how can we use yeah. that as our way to kind of remind ourselves that we're doing great, we're doing better, we're progressing, we're doing better than we didn't were the last time versus just feeling like you just have to always hit every nail on the head. I love that, Rashonda. Yeah. yeah, and I think a lot of people struggle with that. It's noting those little wins, right? It, when you're making progress, note those, note that progress and note those wins. And I think this is one of my superpowers, Rashonda, and you might have this as well. You know, a lot of people have this negative inner talk, and I think that it consumes a lot of people, right? It, I would say that if I had to put a percentage on other people that I meet, it's 80% beating themselves up and mm -hmm. then 20% recognizing when they're doing well. I think, again, a superpower that I have, and I would venture to say that you have as well, is it's flipped. 80% of the time, we're recognizing, hey, Rashonda's doing what she said she was gonna do, she's doing an awesome job, and then, the, again, the 20% is like, but look, you're a great version of yourself, Rashonda, you're not as good as you need to be next year. You need some more, you know what I mean? Yeah. So no. again, I think that's just the tip that we can, we can start changing that inner voice to be 80% positive, rooting us on, being our number one fans. And then 20%, it's okay to be like, hey, you're not good enough yet. We need some more growth. We need some more progress. And so that's a great point. And that's one, one that's, I'd say something very similar to that. But when it comes to someone hears they're like, yeah, that's, that, should, that should be the way I should start thinking because that's what's going to really kind of help change my mindset. But the question, the word they stumble is, what does that look like or how do I get it started? So what would be some tool, what would be some applicable steps you would recommend or that you have recommended to your clients? I love that. I love that question. I think, you know, what we're really getting down to is your self-confidence. You know, where, do, where does that come from? Where does the foundation of self-confidence come from? And I think the foundation of self-confidence comes from you keeping the promises that you make to yourself. So again, it's as simple as if you wake up and say, or if you're going to bed, excuse me, and saying, hey, I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m., you wake up at 5 a.m. and then you recognize, hey, I'm keeping these promises that I make to myself. Same thing with nutrition. If you say you're going to start a plan, start the plan and then recognize when you're starting the plan as well. Again, I say recognize because that's what's developing that reputation with yourself. That if Rashonda says she's going to do something, she's doing it. That is the foundation, in my opinion, of where self-confidence comes from. It's developing a reputation with yourself that if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And we're so easy to let our own self down. Are we so easy to be quick to criticize ourselves? And I think a lot of times we do it because we can do it internally. No one knows, right? I can, you know, smile all day. You have no idea what's going on in the back of back of my head. And I perhaps could be doing it subconsciously to where I don't even recognize how much I've actually done it, you know? Um, and, I, and, you know, everyone always has a story. It's always a rooted reason as to why we do what we do. And, you know, and the, the goal is not only to go back and try to, to kind of see where those connections are, because that's kind of how you un, and un, that's how you kind of open up that space and kind of can work through when you actually recognize what's causing you to feel this way, you know. Uh, but you know, how can you start implementing, moving, looking forward, and looking forward as far as looking ahead and implementing some of those? I tell you, you have to surround yourself. You know, surround yourself with, you know, language as far as you know, enriching. You know, listening to people that's that's inspiring you, that's empowering you. Podcasts, reading books, like. Finding a way to enrich yourself, putting yourself in a place around people that are like-minded, that's all about positivity, or even to give you someone to talk to, you know, that allows you to be safe to, you know, help you to recognize, you know, there are some, a lot of, you know, be the person that's the devil's advocate. Like, if you say something negative, they're more like, okay, but, you know, what about this and what about that to help you kind of see it? Um, and also surrounding yourself by things, you know. Um, I will say in my, in my office, if you were to go to my office, I'm a dietitian, but you won't see food anywhere. All you see are words of encouragement, inspiration all around you. Because even though I'm not, so I'm not saying it to you, you're surrounded by it, you know. And it's not verbal, but it's messaging that you're constantly around. I think you know, creating those spaces for yourself is going to be what helps keeps you in the mindset of positivity. Because we can't always depend on others to always tell us that, and we shouldn't depend on others, but we have to be more proactive in placing these things around us to keep us, you know, fulfilled in, in that capacity. Yeah, I love that. And the, the, we've been using so many analogies, Rashonda, because <laughs> you're so great at it. I love it. Think of the analogy like 
planting yourself in a garden. You know, what you're talking about, Rashonda, right now is planting other flowers by you, right? Mm. You're a flower. You want to have other flowers by you. I think the the opposite spectrum of that is pulling out the weeds as well. You know, going back to self confidence, I think a lack of self confidence stems from self doubt. And I think people that are listening right now, they need to realize that that voice in your head is not your voice, right? It's very hard to realize this, I think, but it was given to you by someone else in your life. You weren't born doubting yourself True. or thinking negatively, right, as a baby. So those were placed to you, those were given to you, those thoughts, that was an external source. So again, like you're saying, is you the one way to continue to build your self-confidence is build it like a muscle or surround yourself with other people who have that muscle. Rashonda, you're so right, and I love that you said that. Yeah, and just like you said, we can keep on that, that flower um, analogy. Pull out the weeds, put in good fertile soil, you know, water it, prune it. You know, it, it takes work, right? It's like the flower doesn't grow by itself. It takes work to keep it growing, to change the dynamics of it, to enhance it. Like, that's another thing, too. It's not a short-term fix. It's a long, it takes time and it takes work. And I think a lot of times people, it's a scary thing to step into to kind of learn, you know, have those conversations to really dig down to the to the root of what's happening and kind you know addressing it um but i guarantee you you know it you have to do that in order to get that new bud going as far as the flower and then knowing where to pick pull those weeds knowing how to i mean i'm using the same analogy but it's the easiest way people can remember like it's it just makes sense to me you know the, it can only do be as good as what's what you're around what's it's around right mm. Um, yeah, one thing that you um, you have you one of your messaging you know you emphasize I think it really comes from the military mindset too and I think it's great. Um, it's about um, um, motivation and discipline versus discipline. Mm -hmm. Now I'm curious to see your perspective on motivation versus discipline because I have a unique one. And when I read that, I was like, he's uh we're we're almost like being able to read each other's mind and it comes to the some of the main pieces of how to. Uh, address people's mindsets. So what's, what's, what's your, what is the motivation versus discipline co concept? Yeah. And I think a lot of people struggle with this, you know, you're looking for motivation, but in my opinion, I mean, to put it in simple layman's terms, I feel like motivation is temporary, right? Where discipline is something that lasts forever. So think about motivation where it's coming and going ebbs and flows. And you don't want to rely on motivation to do something because you're not always going to feel like doing something, right? Motivation says, I'll feel, I'll do it when I feel like it. Discipline says, I'm going to do it whether I feel like it or not. Right. So again, I think that's something that I try to inspire in all my clients. We're not trying to be motivated here. We're trying to make this a part of your identity. We're trying to say, look, it, it's a priority now. It is something that I do, whether I feel like it or not. So that is discipline, in my opinion, versus motivation. But I'd love to hear your two cents as well, Rashad. <laughs> no, I love that. I love that. The, the, and that this speaks. It speaks verse basically what I'm. Um, what you know, what my approach is. This is in a different way, but it's the same like understanding of separating the two. Like I tell people all the time, you cannot depend on motivation. Motivation comes in spurts. It's, you get motivated when you hear a great song, when you hear an inspirational speaker, when you read a great movie, like you get motivated. But motivated is not meant to be a constant. So when you don't, when you don't feel like getting up and you, you know, you want to stay on track with your health and your nutrition, there's going to be times you just don't want to get up. There's going to be times you just don't want to fix that salad. You just don't want to eat that baked chicken. That's when you have to let motivation go and live off of, and I use the word consistency. You want to start learning how to be consistent. Um, when I say or when I say consistency, we consistency to me is the building blocks of how to create any type of change. Um, and when and consistency doesn't live off motivation. Um, and I also use the analogy of when the grass is growing out, growing like wildfire, or when the dishes are piled up in your kitchen, you're not motivated to cut the grass. You're not motivated to wash the dishes, but you realize it needs to be done. So guess what you do? You, split, you flip over and you take care of it. You make sure that it's done. And then after you get, you do those uh, tasks, you're actually grateful and glad that you did do it, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's my perspective when it comes to, you know, motivation, consistency. Uh, I just really hate that people feel like they have to be motivated. Like, that's not long standing. It's going to come. It's going to go. 
Um, and it's not meant to. So we can't depend on that as our, as our pathway for better health. We're going to have to learn how to be, how, and discipline doesn't mean you have to like strap it up and be all rigid about it. It's just, it's a mindset. Like if this, these are goals you want, you got plans. And so steer some of that into, you know, let that be some of your thought process when you're thinking about, okay, I need to do this because it's best for my body. It's best for my health. It's where I say I want to be. It's going to build, it's going to continue to build that confidence right? It's going to continue, you know, it's going to be times when that's what's going to be what helps you to kind of keep it going, keep it going forward. And then over time, it just becomes who you are. You don't yeah. struggle with being motivated. Motivated just goes away. <laughs> and you can probably say the same thing. Like you, you're not motivated anymore to go work out or fix those salads. You just want to do it. Yeah. And I think that needs to be built upon Rashonda. You're so right. Uh, and I think people need to hear this is sometimes a lot of success in life just means showing up, you know, showing up to the gym, showing up to your training session, showing up to your class, showing up to work. You know, a lot of people like we're talking about have this perfectionist mindset and you're not going to have a perfect workout every day. You're not going to have a perfect day when you're working on your nutrition, but you show up and you do it and you give effort. So there's a lot to say about just showing up and saying, Hey, look, no matter how hard this gets, I'm not going anywhere. True. And that's something. And again, let's take away the fitness, let's take away nutrition and it can be applied to life. Right. And I'm sure you agree. And these are life skills that we're embedding into our clients' lives. Everything that we're doing, it's, it's not, these are just like the pieces that we're using, the, the fitness and the nutrition. But it's, if you take away those titles and just the acts of doing everything, you know, that's what's the building blocks to help them to be successful in other areas of their life that they just thought that they couldn't do. You know, and that, again, that routes back into the circle of building that self-confidence, you know? It's not a, it's, it's not a, a, a it's, it's a multifaceted um, um, result. It's not just like, I'm just going to look good and feel good. I'm also going to be, want to be a bit, I want to be better in this. I want to be better. And then I have the ability now because I have those tools, you know? Yeah. I love that you just said that, Rashonda. I wish we had a way to show that, you know, when we show a transformation on our social media. When I have show a transformation on my social media, it would be really cool to be able to interview someone and show how their life has really changed, right? Like you're saying, your body can change and you look better, but if you don't change internally, or if things don't change in terms of your relationships or your discipline or your work, your professional life, again, is it really worth the, all the work that you're putting it into? Yeah. I, I love that you mentioned that because it's not just a physical transformation and you emphasize this with everything that you do. It's a mental transformation. It's it an is. emotional transformation. It's a spiritual transformation, right? Yeah. It, it helps you in your relationships, again, in your professional life, in your discipline, everything you do. And like you're saying, we're just using fitness and nutrition as a vehicle because it's easy to keep those promises that you make to yourself in terms of your nutrition, in terms of your fitness. We're passionate about it. We can explain that. Hey, get to the gym, you know, four to five times a week because you promised you said you would. Yeah, I promise to yourself, for sure, not to others, to yourself. Right. And I'm going to ask you a question about the transformation, Pete, because a lot of times people feel they need to lose, they need to change their body in like two months. And and, and if, if they can just change it that quickly or for this vacation or for this event or whatever, then they feel like they're on top of the world. What do you have to say about people that feel like they need to go on a race for change in, you know, what are the pros and cons to, or if I don't is what are the pros and cons if there are pros to it but what as far as their mindset and, and what does that look like to, tell me what your thoughts on that because I have one but I want to really get what you have to how you present that to others yeah I think this is, there's two things that really stand out and this is the tough love part of me and we all struggle with with, with this is that we need to be patient right and you're in the change that you're trying to take place if you really want to most people they want to create something that's sustainable right 99 percent of people come to me they don't come to me and say jake i got a cruise in four weeks i want to be shredded for that and that i don't care they don't they say Good. jake i want to change my life that's the, that's right? the type of client that you want to come yes you're right you're right and i won't work with those people that that say uh, they come to me because i can't work with those people so again if you want something that's sustainable you're going to need to be patient for it we're going to need to focus on making progress instead of being perfect we're going to need to take these small steps but that's okay you're going to be happy i promise you again like we're talking about here it's not about the end destination if you have a six pack it doesn't get you as happy as you thought it would it's really the jo the journey to the six pack and the things you got to give up right it's like 
it, if everybody had a six pack, it wouldn't be glorified. It's the work that goes behind it. Right. Yeah. And again, the journey that you have to take the the grind, the, whatever it is, it's the journey that you should start enjoying. So be patient in your journey. Another thing to say too, is that if it's fast, if you're seeing fast results, they're usually temporary. So do you really want something that's temporary in your life? It might be fast. It might be seven week transformation, eight week transformation. But again, 85% of people that lose weight, they gain it all back within a year. My goal as a coach, and I'm sure that you would agree, Rashonda, is I don't want you to be a part of that 85%. Very true. Very true. Well said. Well said. Um, strife make us stronger. It takes time for you to mentally, emotionally change as your body's changing. You can drop 30, 40 pounds, but you still had a mindset of who you were before. You haven't evolved. You haven't, you haven't been uncomfortable. You haven't taken those. You haven't had enough time to really work, figure out who you are to be at that body. And because of that, it spirals back because you're walking on ice mentally and emotionally. It just makes it worse. It creates more pressure, more anxiety to stay at this weight because you haven't taken your time being patient with yourself to learn how to slowly get to that stage and build your strength as you're moving to that direction. Yeah. I love that, Rashonda. That's probably why a lot of people win the lottery and then they go broke, right? <laughs> that's, that's, that that's another analogy. <laughs> very true, yeah, very true. Now, one thing that I, I, I love about um, the way you present yourself is that I've been watching your videos and I am just cracking up. <laughs> So tell me, tell me a little bit about this uh, muscle mullet Mike and his granny Jay. Like, what, what's going on with these people? It, but I love it because it's just so funny. <laughs> and how oh, they come man. about? <laughs> ah, that's funny. Um, yeah, it, it's crazy. So first off, my whole message it, with muscle mullet Mike, with the granny, um, with granny Jay, is to combine education and entertainment. Uh, again, kind of like the first thing that we talked about, it is so hard to get people's attention now. Hmm. So if you're scrolling by and you know me and you see me with a granny wig on, you're gonna probably watch that because it's entertaining. So again, I don't just try to entertain even though I know I do sometimes because <laughs> it's funny. But the goal is to eventually educate you, right? And, and that's a majority of my posts is there's a message behind my content. Yes. It's not just look at me with my shirt off, right? It's read this because this is going to, this might change your life. And that's yeah. again, going back to what we're talking about. It's living a life of service to other people. So that's what I want to be able to do. And I understand the concept of building a brand. I can't just expect the to people to come to me. I have to get their attentions first and then say, hey, here's what I have to offer. I'd love to be able to help you. Uh, again, I think that those characters, you know, as silly as they've, they've came, um, you know, just the stem of where Mullet Mike came from. I think I took a picture one time about alcohol and my girlfriend at the time, she, she was getting annoyed with me because I kept doing like the, hey, this is Muscle Mullet Mike, like I did it the whole day. I did everything that I said was the whole day. She's like, you need to do videos of this. So I started making it again, trying to put education and yeah. entertainment together with them, with the Mullet Mikes and make someone laugh. So I appreciate you watching. Yes, for those who just go to his, um, go to his Facebook page and just scroll there, and, and you'll definitely see what I'm talking about. But they, I love that they they make you laugh, but they have they have a point. You know, I love it all. I think that your unique messaging is something that helps people to you know feel at ease, um, and you know feel comfortable with like you know your person. They feel like if they can laugh with you, then they can probably feel they they can trust you more. You know, so I think that you know using that platform is, is, is very powerful. And I hope that you continue to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. That Rashawn? No, yeah. I a hundred percent, but I want to be the coach that, you know, people are like, Hey, this is my coach. Like look at him in a, in a granny <laughs> outfit. So, yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, you know, it's funny that like, it's really helped me develop my self-confidence, like putting myself out there and doing it more often. Mm -hmm. It's made me care less and less about what other people think. Cause if I have the confidence to put on a granny outfit or a mullet, like I don't care what anyone else thinks. you know yeah. what I mean? So yep. it's, it's very beneficial for me too. True. Yeah. I get that. Cause it's like, if you show a vulnerability, it's a form of vulnerability. Like you're making fun of yourself, but same time it's saying it's okay to let this is stuff that don't need to be all, you know, it's heartfelt or serious. Let's like be light because if you want to feel liberated, want to feel happy, 
that's a part of it, right? You know, so I think it, it means multiple things. And, you know, I think as you continue to do that, you'll probably see other ways you can use that as a tool to help others to kind of be okay with making these changes and knowing, you know, that they can be on the other end of it, you know. Um, we are unfortunately wrapping up to a close. Uh, and I feel like we really, both of us together, I'm glad you asked me questions because a lot of times I'm always asking the questions. But it we had a lot of uh, messaging par that are, that's parallel. I love your energy. Um, and I know that those who know you already, and only not and only not in their heads because they, they know how Jake, <laughs> how he does as far as his way that he works with his clients. Um, and I also want to just let people have an opportunity to just find out more about you, you know, where you're at, you know, how can they follow you? Uh, so feel free to just kind of give us a little bit of a spiel of how we can connect with you. Yeah, I appreciate that, Rashonda. And I'm going to say thank you so much for having me on. I'm so honored and I'm excited to have you on my trainer talks as well. So uh, the two biggest platforms that I use right now are Instagram and Facebook. And you can just look me up on there, Jake Sorosiak. My last name is spelled S O R O S. I A K. So yeah, feel free to shoot me a message, anything that I can do or any questions, any way that I can add value. I'm just like Rashonda in the sense that I'm just trying to live a life of service and contribution. So any way that I can add value, I'll do it in a heartbeat. Great. Well, and I definitely um, <clears throat> want to echo that. I know that just from you hearing your background and seeing all different things you've done and more things he's done, he's done more things than what I just kind of jotted down in the beginning. But Take a look at him, see what he's all about. And, you know, if you want someone that can guide you and, and wants more for you than just to help you to, to shred, they want something better for your life, Jake is the person that you should reach out to. And with it being virtual, you can be anywhere. And he can, you can, guys can connect and work together. So, Jake, again, last, uh, I do appreciate you being a part of this podcast show. Um, I hope that we have another opportunity to kind of connect again. Me too, girl. We'll go back yeah. and forth with gratitude all day, girl. I got it in me. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> well, there you go, guys. Um, thanks for watching. This is Rashonda Thornton, the Dietitian Against Diets. Remember, it's not against going against diets. It's going against the diet mentality. How can we be liberated? How can we build self-confidence? How can we have the tools we need to, to really see what life can be when we're on the other side of happiness with ourselves, our body image, and who we are? So live healthy, stay safe. Love you guys. Talk soon. Bye. Love it. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that great, fun conversation with Jake. Uh, he is a, uh, quite a character, but has very um, passionate about what he does. And I'm so happy to have him on today. Uh, as we're heading out, I want to also talk about another company um, that supports my podcast, but I actually love what they are about. Um, they're called Imperfect Foods. If you have not heard about them, they're online grocery stores, and they're all about creating more sustainable and an effective food system with everyone. Uh, why they're called Imperfect Food? <laughs> because they source imperfect produce and surplus fruit directly from farmers, growers, and deliverers, and they bring it directly to your home. Um, if you go to the website, you can create a customizable subscription um, and actually take advantage of their products. And uh, if you go on, you get $10, $10 off your first box if you use the code Rashonda. Um, and I'll spell it for you. That's R-E-S-H-A-U-N-D-A. Imperfect food model is shopping for quality ingredients that can easily support those who grow and have our favorite foods at the same time. Check them out.